Greetings and welcome to worship. Today we celebrate Reformation Sunday. It was October 31st, 1517, the Eve of All Saints Day, also known as All Hallows Eve, or today we call it Halloween, when Martin Luther approached the uh, castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany, nailed up 95 theses, points for discussion, and began what we today call the Reformation. Some will say, well, when did the Reformation end? It hasn't yet. We continue to reform the church whenever it, it gets off track, and so it's important that we remain faithful to the Bible. Uh, my name is Gary Stevenson, Mayamo Gary Stevenson, lead pastor here at uh, Hope Lutheran Church. Pleased that we will have this time here together in worship. Uh, just a reminder that next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, it will be November 1st, and so we will be mentioning those who have passed since last All Saints Day. So if there's someone that you know of, a family member, a friend, a relative, give us a call and let us know in the office, and we will be certain to mention them in the prayer next Sunday. Again, greetings, welcome, people of hope. You are loved, you are missed. We're glad that we have this opportunity through technology to worship together with you. Of course, we also continue to have worship services here in our courtyard. This Sunday, will, October 25th, we'll be meeting at 8.30 in the morning. So if you're able to watch this video before then and you want to come down, otherwise watch our email blast, our newsletter, for more information about upcoming in-person worship services. It hurts us that we have to remain apart at a distance for so long, but know that the church is still living and active. We are still the body of Christ. We are still at work with you and among you, extending hope in Jesus. Happy Reformation Sunday. I want to extend a word of welcome in Spanish. Bienvenidos a ustedes. Aquí estamos para celebrar el amor de Dios. El amor de nuestro Dios que nos transforma a ser más como hemos, hemos, uh, hemos sido creídos para ser. Aquí estamos para alabar y bendecir el nombre de nuestro Señor. Aquí estamos para ser la iglesia juntos. Aunque estamos todavía en distancia, podemos estar juntos en el amor que compartimos nosotros dentro de nuestras familias, dentro de nuestras comunidades y dentro de nuestro mundo, como todos nosotros, el pueblo de Dios. Here we are to worship God. Welcome. As we continue in worship, I invite you to join me for a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gift. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. 
Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you are the holy lawgiver. You are the salvation of your people. By your Spirit, renew us in your covenant of love and train us to care tenderly for all our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hey there, my name is Krista, and I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at Hope. So, I have a question for you guys. If the church was a person, what do you think the church's favorite color is? Maybe green. We've had a green for many, many Sundays, all pyramids. Maybe white, because of Christmas or Easter. I would argue that, well, this is a trick question, but I think it's red because red is a celebration color in the church. And today, I'm wearing red and the church is wearing red, right? So in our church today, we are celebrating Reformation Sunday. Do you know how Americans refer to like the Civil War or the Great Depression? These are different time periods in history where something happened for many years. So those two things are kind of sad things, you know, a war and a depression, but they're really popular ones. Reformation Day is something we, where we celebrate the beginning of the Reformation, which was over 500 years ago. And guess what? 
It's still happening today, 500 years later. So on October 31st, 1517, a long time ago, a priest named Martin Luther mailed 95 theses or complaints about the church to the main leader or the bishop of the church. And these complaints weren't silly church complaints like, you know, nobody washes their coffee mugs around here or get off the lawn, stop playing around or the communion bread is stale. <laughs> These were serious ideas that he was talking about, and he thought the church was doing things that were really wrong. Like, he thought sometimes the church was doing the complete opposite of what it was supposed to do. Some of these things were that the church only serves those who have money, or it doesn't give help enough to the poor, or that the leadership in the church is teaching in a bad way. So this is really serious. Martin Luther was a very smart man, and he wrote and he read lots of things in his life, and he got all of his ideas from the Word of God in the Bible and from other Christian books at the time. He was very faithful to God. And he read one of these verses, which we're going to talk about today in church. Jesus says that if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So when Martin read this verse and the other teachings of Jesus, his view of faith completely changed. He felt that instead of God being a judgmental, harsh God that had so many expectations or chores for us, he felt he needed to tell the church that God loves everyone and that God has come to free people from the harsh things in life. Having faith in God went from being a big chore and a scary thing to being a huge blessing in Martin Luther's life and other people's lives all around the world. So Martin Luther's mission seems to be telling people that God has love and grace for everyone and that Christians are responsible to share that good news with other people. And this is a message that lots of churches still preach today, like our church, Hope Lutheran church, right? We're inspired by Martin Luther. And uh, it's, today is not just about Martin Luther, though. It's about sharing um, God's word and listening to God and sharing that truth with other people. So some people like to wear red on Reformation Day, and Sometimes we have really special worship with organ and trumpets or a really big band. And some people like to remember the life of Martin Luther and talk about him a lot. Other people like to have big dinners and celebrate their heritage. Um, some people like to think about problems still in the church today and how we can be more like Martin Luther and change them. But on Reformation Day, I want you to know that the main point is that Jesus said we are freed by God and we have this responsibility and we have to share that truth with others. And we should be proud of that. So happy Reformation, you guys. I hope you can celebrate a little bit today with your families. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for always making us new. Continue to renew our church and renew our faith every day. Give us hope in our hearts. Give us love and grace for others. In your name we pray, amen. See you next week. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. People of hope, friends, family, grace, mercy, and peace to you all.
from the God who was and is and is still yet to come. Amen. Good morning and once again welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. As Pastor Gary mentioned earlier, according to tradition, on All Hallows' Eve, October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany, an act which called for debate regarding various practices of the Catholic Church in that era. This act, at least in a symbolic way, served as a spark to ignite the movement that led to what later historians refer to as the Protestant Reformation. And this morning, that's exactly what I want to speak to you about. Reformation. So I'll ask you the question, what comes to your mind when you think about the concept of reform? Financial reform? School reform? Political reform? Medical reform? Tax reform? There have been several political advertisements lately. Maybe some of you have noticed. Oftentimes, candidates or political parties promise to bring reform. They claim that a particular policy that has been in place is n that has not been wildly successful. So this other group, this other party, these other individuals, they promise that their brand of change, their flavor of reform, is going to solve all of our problems. Fortunately for you, this isn't the kind of reform that I want to talk to you about today. I would prefer to keep my job. Unfortunately, Reformation can be easily relegated to a historical event, something in the past. But I would prefer to consider it a relevant and present reality. Do I need to be reformed? This question takes us all the way back to the beginning. In Genesis chapter 2, Scripture says, the Lord God formed humanity from the dust of the ground. We as humans are intentionally, are initially, intentionally, uniquely, and wonderfully created and formed by God. Then as we know, things went a bit sideways. Creation, we as the pinnacle of God's creation, ran amok. Things got messed up. Sin entered the world, things were no longer as they were supposed to be, and since that time we as human beings continue to need reformation. We continue to need to be reformed. I don't know how life is for the rest of you, but for me, most of the time, I don't live the kind of life that God has intended for me. My mind wanders to places that it shouldn't. I read Facebook posts or watch news stories and I feel frustrated and irritated too often. Maybe even most of the time. I'm selfish. tend to put my own needs before those of my family. I need to be reformed. What about you? In what ways does God want to reform you? In the letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul writes, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A cursory assessment of current social and political discourse quickly makes the point that our nation, our people, all of us, are in need of transformation, renewal, reformation. I believe that one of the most powerful tools by which we can be reformed is Holy Scripture, the Word of God. The Bible. As Christians, when we gather to worship, one of the essential elements in every service is that the Word of God is read and proclaimed. We read Scripture not because it brings back so many happy memories, not because it's the right thing to do, and though this seems like a solid rationale for good many things, not because of the fact that we've always done it this way. We read Scripture because we believe that the Word of God is living and active. That as we hear the Word of God preach, that God's Word is actually doing something inside of us. It was God's Word that spoke the entire universe into existence. It is by God's Word that all life came into being. It is by God's Word that we ourselves are reformed. Holy God, 
I pray. Speak into our hearts and minds this day that we might experience the reforming power of Your presence. In Holy Scripture, the writings of the prophet Jeremiah remind us that God said, I will put My law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be My people. No longer a merely a covenant or set of promises written on stone tablets, but God articulates a desire to be in a deeply personal relationship with God's people that God's law would be written on our hearts. The presence of God within the human heart for the Hebrew people, the heart was the center, the center of the human will, the center of desire. God desires for all people to be reformed. Again, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Rome saying, but now, apart from the law, righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested to by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. How are people to be made righteous? That is, how are people to be brought back into an intimate and personal relationship with God? How are people to be reformed? Martin Luther called this passage the chief point and the very central place of the epistle and of the whole Bible. Righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. The phrase that I want to focus on for just a moment comes in Romans 3.22 where Paul writes literally, the righteousness of God through faith of Jesus Christ. God has already begun the work of reforming us through Jesus And God continues this work as we trust Christ's reforming work. Our Gospel passage talks about our lives as slaves and our life in Christ as freedom. We as Americans like the idea of freedom. We like it a whole lot. It's been very clear in recent months that we don't like it when people try to tell us what to do. But we also know that as history continues to unfold, freedom has never come without significant cost. Our Gospel passage reminds us that Christ has paid that price. Christ is able to be, is able to reform us, to make us new, to set us free. So what do you think? Do you need to be made new? Do you need to be reformed? Are there any areas of your life that could benefit from just a little bit of renovation? Is your life characterized by love for your neighbor? Joy, peace, patience in the midst of tough times, kindness even when you don't feel like it, goodness when no one is watching, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It sure seems like self-control is in short supply these days. These are the fruits of the Spirit. These are the characteristics of the life that God intends for you and for me to live. We celebrate Reformation Sunday. Some of us wear red. We recognize our Lutheran pride, but of course not too proud. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if our church is going to be a place where people can come to understand the love of God, then Reformation must begin inside of us. And it's up to each of you what happens inside of you. Reformation is not merely an historic event. Reformation is a daily invitation that each of us receive when we open our eyes, when our feet hit the floor. How will you actively embrace or even pursue God's reforming work in your life? May God continue to mold each of us more and more into the likeness of Jesus Christ today, tomorrow, and always. Amen and amen.
For nearly 2,000 years, those that have followed Christ have made confession of their faith. Today, let us gather with those around the world who for centuries have confessed their faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to God, responding to each petition with the words, Grant us your tender care. On this day commemorating the Reformation, O God, we pray that Christian churches around the globe be reformed and renewed, that ecumenical collaboration be widened and deepened, and that Lutherans stand firm in the gift of the gospel. Hear us, holy God. Grant, Grant us, us your, your tender, tender care. care. Attending to the natural earth, O God, we pray that the seas and the lands be cleansed of pollution, that both rainstorms and droughts be moderated, and that animals retain their habitat. Hear us, steadfast God. Grant, Grant us your, your tender, tender care. care. Aware of disorder around the world, O God, we pray that wars and armed terrorism cease that violent extremism everywhere be calmed, that governments meet the needs of their poorest residents, that the days before our election be peaceful, and that all prejudice based on gender, color, orientation, or ethnicity be rejected. Hear us, sovereign God. Grant, Grant us, us your, your tender, tender care. care. Facing the coronavirus, O oh God, we pray that the pandemic and its anxieties subside, that medical personnel and services be everywhere supported, that any who are unemployed find work, and all who have been evicted finding housing, and that a trustworthy vaccine be developed. Hear us, compassionate God. Grant us, us your tender, tender care. care. Moved by the needs of all neighbors, O oh God, we pray. For those suffering from discrimination, for those incarcerated or held in immigrant camps, for farm workers and their children, for all who are hungry, and for those we name here before you now, either silently or aloud. Hear us, Mother in God. Grant, Grant us, us your, your tender, tender care. care. Thinking lastly of ourselves, O oh God, we pray that we be enabled to love our neighbors as ourselves and that you receive our personal petitions. Hear us, loving God. Grant, Grant us, us your, your tender, tender care. care. Grateful for the lives of all who have died in the faith especially for all the people whose efforts reformed and renewed the church. O oh God, we pray that at the end we join with them in your glory. Hear us, eternal God. Grant, Grant us, us your, your tender, tender care. care. Enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray, as we trust in your might and your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace is so much more than just the absence of conflict. Peace is a complete and total well-being of body, mind, spirit. 
the kind of peace that only God can grant. And so I invite you during the week, today, whenever, to get a hold of those individuals that are important in your life. Maybe you've spoken with them recently, maybe you haven't spoken with them for some time, but share with them your wish for God's peace to be with them. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God, for your creative word, making and mending all things, evoking the cosmic hymn of praise, and singing a love song for your beloved, your vineyard, your flock, your people. With all creation we sing glory. Blessed are you for your liberating word, speaking through Moses and the prophets, encountered in the Gospels, and proclaimed in the assembly your freedom, forgiveness, and life for the world. With the whole world we say blessing. Holy are you, O God, for your living word among us whenever we gather, welcoming everyone to your feast, and with grace and generosity bringing to earth the kingdom of heaven. With saints and angels we cry, Holy! Clothe us in your loving spirit, flowing from the crucified and risen one, and keep us awake to your presence in the people and places you call us to serve. Glory, praise, and blessing are yours, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I invite you to receive the blessing. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.
Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.